Hi right, guys, let's start on chapter 5, the eukaryotes. We talked about the prokaryotes in 4, so now we'll get around to the other guys. General characteristics of the eukaryotes, we've got protozoans, fungi, algae, water, and slime modes. Some of these guys are pathogens, some of them are necessary, just like in the bacteria. Reproduction. These guys have a variety of methods. Now, since these are eukaryotes, their DNA is packaged in chromosomes and they have a nucleus. Some of these guys have all different types of ways of producing asexually. Some will produce sexually and form gametes and zygotes just like in humans. Well, similar to humans. Algae, fungi, and some protozoa can do either sexually or asexually, depending on circumstances. Reproduction, nuclear division, same thing. One or two complete copies of the genome, each chromosome. Single copy would be haploid. These guys are going to be like the fungi, some of the algae, and the protozoa. The two copies, diploid like ours, are... Again, fungi, algae, and protozoa. <laughs> Depends on the species. These guys can go through mitosis and they can go through meiosis. That's kind of interesting. I don't see what it's got to do with this, but there's the malaria falciparum uh, that's infecting those white cells, and you can see some in the red cells. That's the way malaria infects people. It's a protozoan that gets into the blood through the mosquito bite. Protozoans, protist, animal-like, the plant-like are going to be the algae, and which are fungus-like, and water molds. They can be one-celled, unicellular protozoans are, and algae, or you can even get multicellular algae, such as those kelp forests that you maybe have heard about in California are actually multicellular algae or seaweed. These guys can either be photosynthetic like algae or they can be like protozoans and they are not they're not going to be autotrophs. Some of these guys are free living, some are parasitic that carry off a life cycle within their host or multiple hosts. There are those that do that and we'll we'll see those later and can cause illness in the process. Protozoans, these guys are in water, they're in the earth, free living, some are parasitic. Um, we've already read that. During the feeding and growth part, these guys are called trophozoites. I think you may have seen that on that on that dog on that photograph we had of the malaria. Others can develop from trophozoic to an encapsulated cyst, almost like an endospore, when environmental conditions are too harsh, just like the endospores for the bacteria. Some of these guys are going to produce uh, asexually, some sexually, some can do both. Asexual reproduction, a binary fission, or you can get budding, or something called schizogony. In schizogony, the nucleus divides multiple times, so instead of doing like the two that we have, maybe this guy will do four, five, six, and then these guys will divide into much smaller cells, so something like here, let's put another nucleus right there. This is Giardia. Giardia is a parasite, protozoan, that lives in fresh water. All those clear mountain streams that you see and people tell you as long as it travels 100 yards over rocks, it will be good to drink. They are full of these guys. That's trophozoic form. Um, and there's the individual close-up. This guy will give you a nasty diarrhea. Is That's his claim to fame. 
So never drink any any water that hasn't been purified or else you will get to host these guys and get in intimate terms with your toilet. Okay, parasitic helminths, worms, brown worms, and nematodes, lots of different kinds. These guys are unsegmented, which means they don't not like earthworms with the segments. They're just these guys have a full digestive system. Pinworms is one of the most common forms, and around here we also have hookworms. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get to the to the disease section. Flatworms, platy helminths. These guys are going to be include flukes and the old tapeworms and turbellarian turbellarians, which include the planarian worms. The flukes, trematodes, non-segmented flatworms that have an oral sucker at the top. Tapeworms, and there's a beef tapeworm, a fish tapeworm, and a pork tapeworm. Cestodes, these guys are segmented and they're flat, so it looks kind of like this. And these guys will break off from the worm, and each one of those segments is in itself infectious. At the top, they've got these suckers, and they've got those hooks to help them hang on to the inside of your bowels. Uh, the scolex is the head head region. You can see it's up the whole thing. Um, Tania solium, that's the pork tapeworm. I'm trying to remember the beef tapeworm. Oh well. Fungi, molds, and yeast. These guys are heterotrophic. They don't make their own food. They get it from other things like we do. Medically important species, Zygomycota, Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, and Microsporidia. These guys produce some really nasty toxins, uh, poison mushrooms, guys. Help plants absorb water and minerals. Some of this is food, some we use in religious ceremonies, some we use to manufacture foods and beverages. Alcohol is actually made by the fungi, the yeast, that convert, they ferment alcohol from uh, sugar since they do it uh, anaero anaerobically. Some of these guys we use as a source for antibiotics, uh, some of the chemicals they produce. Uh, they use them for research. These guys take dead trees and critters and they recycle them. 30% of these fungi are going to cause diseases, plants, animals, and humans, like the black mold that we get in our house when they get wet and stay wet and warm. These guys can cause fruit, pickles, jams, jellies, your bread. Everybody's seen the green mold growing on bread, I'm certain. So these guys are, they get around. Algae, autotrophic, protus. Unicellular, multicellular, we've already talked about. Uh, these guys have these chloroplast, and that's the, that's the part that actually receives the sunlight and uses it to manufacture sugar. And these guys have the pyrenoids. Some of these guys have plates that make, him, make them hard on the outside. And classified within these groups. You don't need to know that. These are just showing you some examples of these. They're kind of interesting. All right, guys. Lichens. Everyone's seen lichen on rocks or whatever. If you've been out in, in any kind of forested area. These guys break down rocks, and those are minerals that the plants need. They uh, colonize areas like lava flows that and help to break those down and release those nutrients for the soil. Lichen is actually two animals. It's a green algae or cyanobacterium and then a 
Ascomyositi fungus living in symbiosis. So the green algae and this fungus or a cyanobacteria and the fungus. And those are kind of 